Discover unbeatable deals and convenience at your neighborhood Family Fair supermarkets. Score exclusive deals, earn rewards, join clubs, and clip digital coupons for extra savings all in one place. Our exclusive offers bring savings straight to your card. Explore a wide range of local products that support your community. With easy pickup and delivery options, saving time and grocery shopping has never been easier. Family Fair is all about making your grocery experience easy and affordable at your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. Family Fair in your neighborhood. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. We've locked in low prices to help you save big store-wide. Look for the locked in low prices tags and enjoy extra savings throughout the store. Baker's. Fresh for everyone. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi Fruit Loop. What you know? I know that Achilles surgery is the devil. <laughs> Yeah. It's been an eventful few weeks for the both of us, I have to say. Yeah, it's been um, a crazy feels, roller coaster. It feels so good to be back as a duo. I know yeah. our listeners have missed it. It's good we can solo it when we need to, but man, I've just been all by myself. Yeah, I've watched every one of them. You are so supportive. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just want to say a big, big thank you to everybody who has reached out on social media left really amazing messages. They have been a bright spot in some very, very dark days for me. And also, you know, back when Angie was sick, you guys constantly would send little messages or comment if I posted something. And it really blew her mind that people from all over the world took the time to just wish mm -hmm. her well. And yeah. Fruit Loop, again, just has been such a rock for us this week in the midst of her grieving because Angie loved you like one of her own. Oh, she was awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to miss her. And um, so just wanted to say thank you to everybody. It has meant so much to us, and uh, we appreciate it. Yep. I want to say thank you for uh, your prayers and all while I had my surgery. It went good. I had a couple of things. I ha I'm weird. <laughs> so being a redhead and a diabetic, you tend to be allergic to stuff. And I had an allergic reaction to some bandages. So I ended up on a steroid, which shot my sugar up. So it was it was all fun and games. Yeah. I tell you, I read a comment not too long ago where somebody said, I like the podcast, but they talk too much about their family and their doctor's appointments. And I have to say, we're not the podcast for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Our families are so, we're so woven in. Yeah. And we are units. And uh, yeah. either that or fast forward, because it ain't going to stop. Yep. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, so the Ariel Robinson trial. Oh, sorry. We want to give a big shout out to one of our amazing sponsors, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. You can now I got to adjust my thing because I don't I'm know sorry. if the floor is clean. No, you good. Uh, you can go to two cool T-Shirt Quilts dot com slash Pretty Lies and Alibis. Andrea will know we sent you. We appreciate her support. So. Yep. I was, what can they do for, we are so out of sync. Holy <laughs> moly. They can take your t-shirts and make them into a quilt that is too cool. I feel like we're on the very first episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so I was supposed to have sat in this trial all week, but had family things to deal with. And, and, um, but I have kept up with it. We um, are going to go through the Vallo filings on Monday just because I have not had a lot of time today. I've been up helping my uncle with a few things, uh, packing up a lot of medical supplies and stuff. So, but I, we only thought it was appropriate to kind of do this episode today since the verdict came down yesterday, maybe the day before. And um, just wrap this up. Hopefully this will not be the end of the, the biological families. I say the families push to have some major DSS reform. And, uh, but we're going to go through this now and we're going to talk about, we're going to give you the, uh, quick version of what happened this week at the Ariel Robinson trial. So it only lasted four days. It was really quick and it only took the jury an hour and a half to deliberate before finding her guilty of all these charges. Um, uh, she was what, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I mean, there wasn't, 
and I know we're going to talk about it, but there wasn't anything. I mean, the evidence was stacked against her. Yeah. Well, uh, the judge immediately after the verdict sentenced her to life in prison. Her husband, Austin, who testified against her, has yet to be sentenced. Uh, it should be soon. It was uh, after he testified at the trial. He still faces 10 to 20 years for aiding and abetting homicide by child abuse. You know, one thing they said at the trial is this baby was three foot, two inches tall and 40 pounds. I actually did the BMI calculator on that. She was one point away from being mal malnourished. Child. And that is that is something her family has said consistently since she was murdered is if you look at pictures of her when she was with her mother and her biological family compared to her last few months with uh, this monster, um, she definitely looked uh, gaunt. And we also learned that her eating habits was a big deal to Ariel and uh, probably was part of the reason this kid was murdered. So opening statements, the prosecution told jurors they would hear about how Austin Robertson walked in after hearing the beating outside and saw Ariel standing over her with the belt. And uh, the defense essentially just said these pictures of this poor child are horrific. And I worry that you will see these photos and your first instinct is I got to hold somebody accountable. And that's not what your job is. Uh, yes. It is. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, well, uh, okay. I think yeah. I'm law school, but. Uh, your job is to consider what the evidence is and make a determination that the state has proven that my client is the one who committed this crime. So they showed some body cam footage. This was part of the motions at the hearing I went to, the one where Austin pled guilty. And um, I never saw anything public about them, the judge granting it, but clearly this was brought in. Um, body cam footage taken moments after emergency crews responded to a 911 call for a possible drowning were shown in court. And they said they found three-year-old Tori uh, unresponsive on her bedroom floor, covered in bruises. The body cam footage shows Ariel talking to law enforcement and blaming the bruises on Austin, mainly from the two of them supposedly doing CPR wrong. As for the bruises on Tori's legs, we know she blames Tori's little brother, and she tells authorities he will hit her with a shoe. He'll find one of Austin belts, a hanger, anything that is around because he is angry. Here's my question. I mean, we know from evidence that she's lying. I mean, are they going to hold her accountable for lying on the stand? I mean, well, I was, you know, you we know just took. We just tucked that in with that life sentence she's got. I checked. She's still at the Greenville County Detention Center. It doesn't look like they've transferred her. I wish her the worst possible time ever in prison. And I don't wish, you know, a lot of people just like, I hope somebody gets a hold of her. But I do. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't understand any of it. And I, I know the family released a statement. I think we shared it on our page. We did. Um, But they're still dealing with things. Clearly. I mean, think about her brother, who the, uh, Ariel blamed. Right. I mean, that's got to hurt him. Because well, and, from what we saw, he's from his school, they said he was a, the sweetest little boy ever. Of course. And, you know, we, we come into that here in a little bit about the reaction to her allegations that the little boy did this. But, you know, and then you think about it, number one, the absence of this child from their lives is very obvious we know they probably witnessed her being abused by Ariel. This is not a first time abuse thing. They, you know what I'm saying? That builds yeah. up, builds up, builds up. You get yeah. comfortable apparently beating a child. Yeah. And, um, and then you think too, they probably had to do interviews with these kids. And so bless their hearts. They are still in the foster system right now. I know the family has fought to get them back, but I, you know, did, I have nothing against DSS workers. I think they are overworked. They have too many kids on their caseloads. We have people in positions of power who need to pump money into these systems because we're seeing this way too often. Yeah. And we do have that link still up on our page. We do. Go sign it. It's for yeah. DSS reform, you know, here in South Carolina, but it really needs to be all over this country with too many yep. kids that are taken maybe out of homes that aren't great, but then they're put into homes where they're either sexually abused, physically abused or murdered. It's yeah. got to change. Yeah. So Greenville County uh, chief medical examiner, Michael, Dr. Michael Ward, uh, he's a forensic pathologist. He testified she was beaten so hard that her blood vessels burst 
causing blood to collect in her muscles and fat, which could have led to her death. He explained when we lose enough blood, the heart cannot pump properly. Um, and he says, this isn't what we think of a traditional bruise of the skin. This is a severe, deep injury that is tearing tissue from tissue. Uh, he also said that the injury pattern shows where the belt and belt buckle made contact on her back. This is more, for me, when I, when I heard this, it was almost like a car wreck, something you would sustain in a car wreck that much force causing internal bleeding. And here, this happened at the hands of a... Somebody who was due to adopt her within days of her murder. Yeah. That's what's That's the scary. scary part. Yeah. 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 And I mean, look, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, my theory will always be that Ariel had this uh, reality show quick ride to fame and then thought, hey, I'll adopt these three kids and we'll just have this blended racial family and we'll we'll make a reality show of it. I really do think that because there's nothing in this that shows me she adopted for love. Yeah. And I do not play the race card. It's not something I do. I don't see color. But she made a lot of posts herself about the color differences between her biological children and these foster kids. And to me, it just the way she paraded her on Instagram before she was able to, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> before she was legally able to post these pictures of these kids. Yeah. Um, I do feel like these kids were a cash grab for her. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, gosh. It was almost like the rules don't, don't apply to me. Yeah, uh, you know. Because they go over all that with you. Right. And I like think. We know, we both know people who foster. Good people. Yeah, and adopt. They're amazing. Right. And they go through that with you, what you can and can't do. And I think the thing that's important for us to reiterate, too, is that, number one, we are not down on DSS workers who are in the field every day with 108 kids on their caseload and 30 days to see all of them and spend quality time. Not possible. Also, totally support 100% good foster parents, good adoptive parents. There are more out there that want to love kids than those who don't. Yeah. But losing one kid to foster care to a family that never should have got her just for the simple fact their house was going into foreclosure. Yeah. Um, there are red flags that were missed that cost this poor baby her life. That's what we're saying. We're not down on DSS or people who truly love, love children. Yeah. So Dr. War testified that Tori had no defensive wounds from the beating, which suggests the person responsible held her hands inflicting the blows, uh, a DNA, uh, Oh, I was gonna mess that word up. Analyst, a here we go. A DNA <laughs> analyst. We back. We up. Here we go, people. Uh, with public safety testified about finding Tori's DNA on a black brown belt uh, that also had Ariel and Austin's DNA on it. Um, Dr. Christina Gobin said this is extensive, dependent on a child's body that was inflicted repetitively. By blunt force trauma, which is the worst I've seen. And we heard that several multiple times. Yeah. This was the worst they had seen. I mean, you, I can't imagine how hard she was hitting this kid with this belt to cause this kind of devastating injury. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't either. <sighs> um, so Dr. Joyce Granger uh, is Prisma's health pediatric emergency department. Um said that Tori was so badly beaten uh, that she would have been in excruciating pain and slowly. When you download the Baker's app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Baker's makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Baker's app now to save big on your next purchase. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. 
Chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. He would have been altered and then unconscious. Uh, Simpsonville firefighter Bo Givens testified about severe bruising on Tori's body that Ariel blamed on the child's brother. Uh, Givens said, if you have, if you give the kid a ball bat, he's not going to be able to do this much damage. Uh, he said the extent of her injuries were revealed when they removed clothing to do CPR. You know, they have to be so traumatized. I mean, I'm sure any call about a kid, uh, being hurt or killed is bad, but to see a child beaten that badly, um, you know, we forget that our first responders and investigators and everybody, they have to go home at night too. I yeah. feel so bad for these people. Yep. So paramedic with Greenville County EMS testified about responding to pediatric cardiac arrest call and saw bruising on Tori's abdomen and found no heart activity. Uh, another paramedic, Ken Kohler, could be heard on recording asking, all this is from the brother, question mark, talking about uh, Tori's bruising. So I just said question mark. I don't know why, because when we do those texts, I always say. Oh, yeah, because we do the Siri. Although yeah. my Siri is oftentimes just day drunk and totally minces up what I'm trying to say. It's the We need a Southern Siri. I know, right? We need Siri that specializes in banjo talk. Yeah, they need to let us come out to Apple right and test it for them so they can get the right my grandma actually i was cleaning up her house yesterday for her after everybody had left and she said we need to reach reach that and she means rinse but we need to reach it reach it bless it so they showed surveillance from cvs where austin was buying that liquid tylenol thinking it was going to bring down the bruising come on um this is where he messed up had he saw the beating and went in and saw her condition and called 911 and said, my wife just beat this child severely. Yep. He would not be going to prison. Nope. Um, in fact, it was over an hour after he discovered her that 911 was called. They also showed surveillance from Ariel and Tori in church the night before. If you remember, she had vomited on herself on the way to church. Yep. And you see Tori in clothes looking up at Ariel. And then in another picture, you see her leaving in nothing but panties. But you also see no bruises on her body. Yeah. So a former assistant pastor at Life Restoration Church, Miss Nelson, she was the first witness um, of the defense. And she said the defendant's husband, Austin, does not have a reputation for being truthful. And she also says she loves and cares for Ariel. I, I'm glad she's a former assistant pastor because you can't look at what evidence has proven and say you care for this woman. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. witness Gene Smith and Avery Santiago, they both testified that they saw Ariel and an undressed Victoria Rose Tory, um, in the church bathroom as Ariel tried to clean the girl's dress in a sink. And, uh, Gene Smith said when she asked Ariel whether Victoria was sick, Ariel told her the child eats too much and makes herself throw up. Santiago, Avery Santiago testified She heard Ariel say to Victoria Rose, oh, you're cold. You're cold. Girls that make themselves throw up deserve to be cold. And that's because the the woman had heard Victoria Rose say, I'm cold. And Ariel denied making these statements when she took the stand, which she did. And when she did, I'm going to tell you, um, it's a good thing she was never on TV for acting because she tried to squeeze out a few tears when she was asked what it was like to have Tori in their home. And she's uh, grabbing the tissue and there's just no tears coming out. And she said Tori was a perfect child and it made her feel really good and a lot more girly. She said Tori was easy to get along with and they had a good relationship. She said she was my mini me. When asked about Austin's statements to police, uh, and I guess uh, the prosecution, Ariel said he's lying. She said Tori did not have many behavior issues and her attorney asked Ariel if she spoiled her kids and she said it was easy with Tori because she was the only girl and the baby of the family. It's, it's really sickening, but he, here's my, just a couple of things on that. Okay. So she throws up on the way to church, right? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe the kid's sick. I mean, that's what any normal adult 
man or woman taking care of a child would think. Yeah, I mean, either she's sick or, yeah, sometimes if kids are chewing on their fingers, they may gag themselves and accidentally throw up. But she wasn't a baby. No, you know? and the thing, the thing is, the next morning, if she's not eating, maybe she doesn't feel well. Exactly. And that's what this all stemmed from, according to Austin, is that uh, Victoria Rose was taking too long to eat her pancakes. Yeah. Um, so she talked about her and Austin deciding to adopt and her desire for a daughter. Uh, Ariel says after making pancakes for Tori, she was still eating them after an hour. After finishing, Tori went off to play and returned to say she accidentally urinated in herself and the bed urinated on herself in the bed. Ariel breaks down while explaining how Tori drank four to five cups of water and then started vomiting before going limp. She got diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wasn't one of the things he was getting or did get from the store was Epsom salt? I think they had that at the house because okay. on the surveillance, I don't see that, that bag for yeah. that, but they did show uh, one of the exhibits they showed was the Epsom salt by the bathtub. I assume. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't make any sense. No, she did not seeing any bruising on Tori and only saw it after she was dead. When asked to explain why she made all those voluntary statements to police about Tori's older brother with anger issues, she said to be helpful. But also when asked, she admits she does not think a child caused the bruising to Tori. Instead, she says Austin has terrible anger issues and he keeps it bottled up. She blames him for the beating. I'm going to tell you right now, we look, we poured through their social media, which at the time was active. And we saw photos with Ariel, with Victoria and photos with Austin. And you, every photo we saw with her, with Victor, with Ariel, she was distant and didn't want to be standing with her. She was stiff. You know, she wouldn't lean in. So if you're taking a picture with somebody, you kind of lean in. With Austin, you saw that. You did see maybe she felt safer with him. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah. the last day of her life, he wasn't there for her when she needed exactly. it. But with, with Ariel, it was a, a very forced smile for this child. And yeah. a stiff body that was always leaning away from her. And that's so telling. Yeah. Yeah. So when asked why she told the DSS worker that Tori's brother lies, she said Austin told her to. Uh, she said, I was frustrated uh, Thursday when asked about the church incident. Yeah. When they asked her about uh, the vomiting, she said she was frustrated. Uh, prosecutors show a photo of Austin and Victoria and remind Ariel she would refer to him as an amazing dad. On Father's Day, Ariel posted a photo of him and Tori with the caption, there's not a daddy-daughter duo in the world who love each other more than these two right here, and what an amazing daddy he is. Uh, Austin took the witness stand on Tuesday, testified that Ariel would become angry with Smith's eating habits and beat her with belts or a wooden paddle. He said, sometimes I'd take a piece of her food just to help her out. You know, why didn't he stop this crap? Like, that's yeah. the thing. I don't care if she said he was good to her. Or she looked good in pictures. He knew for a long time this was going on. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion, he needs to be in prison for life, too, because when you enable somebody that it gets to the point to where you don't stop it before it becomes murder. Yeah. How are you not going to the prison for it? But yeah, I'm not the judge. And I know he cooperated, but still. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, it's just who uh, it, just giving somebody a beating because they didn't eat right or it took them longer to eat. I ain't gonna lie. You was on the worst cooks of America. Maybe your food's horrible. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on. Yeah, Touche because yeah. yeah. Um, and on worst cooks. I mean, come on. Right. And she won it $25,000, you know, yeah. maybe take some cooking classes. But the other thing too is like, I mean, you made such a valid point. Maybe the kid wasn't feeling good. Yeah. But you know, you think about it. Um, what's scary is this woman worked in a school she was a teacher. Yeah. And the other thing, she had two other kids, two other kids. And, um, you know, remember, uh, at the hearing I went to, he said, Tori always got the worst of it. Yeah. Yep. You get these women, though, sometimes they have a daughter and they get jealous because the attention of the male in the house goes towards this precious little baby girl. Yeah, we could probably and, sit here and try to theorize all day. But and she sounds like a bully. 
Yeah. And I'm not making any excuses for Awesome whatsoever. He's a grown man. Right. But it sounds like she's a bully. In the videos we watched, she was, you know, it was almost like she wore the pants in the family. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a southern term, I guess. I don't she know. She's going to wear them in the pokey. She, mm -mm. she ain't going to be, she's going to be bottom of the barrel. No. Uh, okay. So he, Austin said the beating that killed her lasted about an hour. He said Ariel would usually discipline Tori in the child's bedroom or kitchen when he, when he, when he, sh when he would show, a, a little, 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 when he was shown a photo of Tori's bruises that first or first responder saw, he says the bruise he saw the night before wasn't as dark. When asked why he didn't call 911, he said, I was scared for this moment, us being in trouble, her being in trouble, the kids being taken away. I was terrified. Well, so were those kids. Exactly. Um, so Austin says his last conversation with Tori, he promised her this wouldn't happen again. According to him, she said she loved me and I said, I love you too. He also told investigators Ariel used a specific thick brown leather belt to beat Tori. The, the defense attorney, Bill Bowton, uh, tried to discredit Austin, essentially, in the testimony he was getting, uh, giving. And he got him to admit that, okay, so, you know, I'm not defending Austin. Uh, but he got him to admit that he lied to his wife during their 14-year marriage. He said he lied when he told her he had graduated from high school and later earned a GED, even though she threw him a party to celebrate. Um, he also lied twice about losing a job and also pawned items without telling his wife. I mean, look, uh, no marriage is perfect, but let me just say, <laughs> I totally believe Austin's side of this. Well, I mean, they have him going, day, yeah. you know, they have him going to the drugstore. Right. Um, I mean, I understand a defense attorney has a job to do. Just like Larry Woodcock went up to Lori's defense attorneys at that arraignment, shook their hands and said, nothing personal. You have a job to do. I'm not going to bash the defense attorney. He's only got so much to work with. Yeah. So the yeah. adoption super supervisor with DSS said Tori's brothers, who are ages uh, five and seven, were taken into emergency protective custody. Ariel pointed to the older brother as they were leaving and said, he's a liar. You can't believe a word he says. So in closings, the prosecution said her death was not from anemia or anything else the defense may have indicated. He also said Ariel is a good liar. And she called Austin a criminal who didn't protect Tori. And that's the truth. Yep. The defense said nobody is denying Tori su suffered a tragic death and that Ariel didn't see the extent of what happened until later. He accuses Austin of cutting a deal and said he had a lot to gain in doing so since 10 years is very different than life in prison. And after the verdict uh, for, um, for Ariel guilty, he asked the judge to consider that Ariel snapped due to financial strain and stress. And that was it. Okay. The judge's statement was yes. amazing. Do you have it? Uh, yeah. You have it on the bottom of this paper. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. I'm right. still, uh, I'm still slightly sleep deprived. No, it's all right. Uh, she said in my 13 to 14 years as a judge, I've never seen anything like this. And that yeah. was judge Letitia Verdon. Um, that's what she said during the sentencing. I liked her. I only got to see her in action briefly that one day, but she seemed fair. Yeah. And it's horrible stuff. And and those poor jurors that have had to sit and look at pictures of this baby girl uh, yeah. beaten to death. You know, it reminds me of the trials of Gabriel Hernandez and that kind of thing. Just red flags everywhere. Um, yeah. So I'm glad she was found guilty. Justice oh, yeah. uh, is served. But this poor biological family, those poor boys will forever have to live with what happened to her so that's all for what happened at the trial it's not all but it's kind of the most important stuff monday yeah. we're going to pick back up with valo we're going to dive into this new filing by her defense attorneys who are essentially saying they don't want a severed trial um it doesn't look like this trial is going to happen in october nobody really thought it would anyway also said she had a very fragile mental state so i kind of would not be surprised if they try to go back the incompetent route. What do you think? I hope not. I hope not either. Let's keep rolling. Yeah. Anyway, go. good to be back together. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you guys just brace yourself because you're going to be hearing what you know every episode. <laughs> All right. Again, thanks for everything this week, guys. Y'all are the best. We were going to put out some old episodes. It just didn't happen. Yep. So we back, y'all. All right. Have a good weekend.
With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.